Hello. So I uh, I know that I said I was going to work on things other than texture, uh, other than terrain, but I wanted to fix these textures. I had some very very bland textures, and I'm sure a lot of people were annoyed by that. I also got a lot of requests to do biomes. I figured I'd tackle both of those at the same time. So this is my new tile texture, which you can download if you want, but it's very very basic. You're welcome to make your own. These are kind of space tiles, so they're not um, they're not really the same as you'd find on a normal planet. But as you can see, I've got 16 random tiles just for the sake of having tiles, and then I've got them in four rows. Each row is slightly darker than the last to get that tiering that I was using before. But we do have to change our scripts a little bit. Not noise. Well, that's okay. It'll open up whatever. Probably chunk, actually. Nope. Player I.O. So here we are uh, in build face, and you can see that I do this uh, UV row equals blah 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 blah. That's correct, but I also need to take the brick ID and change the UV row to, to match it. Uh, so uh, the, the UV row right now is uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.7, uh, 0.5, and 0.75. But if brick is greater than or equal to 8, then UV corner dot Y plus equals uh, 0.0125, which is uh, oh, sorry. There we are. So uh, the bricks are no longer 0.25 and 0.25. They're 0.125 and 0.125, which is why I have to make this change here. But similarly, over here in UV corner X, brick minus 1 divided by 4 is now brick minus 1 divided by 8. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now we shouldn't really see very much change because the first bricks I had were the... Well, actually it looks like we're starting on the bottom row, so there is a change. Um, and you can see that we've got uh, a better a better set of, of textures here. It already looks like terrain. Of course, the brick choices are completely arbitrary and random at this stage, um, but that's fine at the moment. Uh, one of the things I did is uh, these tiles should be slightly more amenable to bump mapping later on when I restore the bump map textures, but I haven't haven't really figured out the best way to do that yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and change the frequency of these bricks, but the first thing I've got to do is I've got to define the bricks here in chunk as enums. Um, I hope you can't hear the loud people, but that's okay. I'm going to pause this and just fill it in while you're not watching. Alright, so here we are. I've gone ahead and I've just done all of the bricks. So here you can see the first row, and here's the second row. However, at the moment, we actually have our rows reversed down here in the face values. Uh, where are that? Right down here. here it is. Uh, we currently do this, uh, if brick is greater than or equal to 8, then plus equals. We actually need to make this less than 8. Since right now we only allow for four bricks, we should only see these four gray bricks at the top. Yep. So of course, now the, ne the next question is, how do we integrate the more the, the more important bricks into a uh, world of our choosing? And the reason the way the reason the reason we're going to do that is because this looks dumb. The way we're going to do that is we're going to use biomes. Uh, and I know that a lot of you wanted me to do biomes, so that's why I'm going back and doing them. Um, this might be a little bit long because I'm planning to do a good chunk of the biome stuff in this episode and I've already spent some time on fixing up this texture. So let's go ahead and start building the biome. We're going to need to have a new C Sharp class called Biome. But unlike all of the other classes we've made so far, this is not a mono behavior, it's just a class. And that means it doesn't have starter update. And it does have to have system.serializable. And the reason for that is because we want to be able to edit our biomes in the in the inspector window. So let's go ahead and start adding some variables here. Public string name equals um, unknown biome. And uh, now we have to we have a couple of choices to make. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put in a desk. Uh, no desk, and that's going to be a description that's more or less for our. Um, I don't think we need to have, say multi-line attribute. I think it's just multi-line. Yeah, um, that's that description is probably not going to be shown to the player, but it'll be important because we may have dozens of biomes and we don't want to lose track of what the hell's going on. 
So then we need a public float uh, uh, mountain power, and we need a public float min height max height. We're also going to need a public float um, mountain power bonus. So these are all just mathematical pieces that we're going to be adding in to the mountain power equation. But in order to be able to add them in, we need to be able to generate biomes. Uh, and to do that, we're going to need to go ahead and go into world and have a list of biomes. So let's go ahead and select our world. It's here in our main camera. And our biomes are here. And you see we can edit them just fine. So let's just go ahead and put in two for starters. Let's go ahead and call this. The defaults don't take because we're looking in the inspector window, which ignores defaults, but that's OK. We can just do it manually for now. Let's call this one uh, Flatlands. And we'll make the mountain power 1. Um, we'll make the min height 10 and the max height 20. Uh, now, there are actually two options for max height. We're going to be taking it such that we're actually specifying the max height, but the other option is to make that max height actually the, um, the, the amount lower from the maximum possible height, but we're not going to bother with that. And we're going to give this a mountain bonus of negative 0.3, which means that we're going to have very, very small amounts of mountains rather than, rather than the rather uh, uh, round mountains that we have now. So here we're going to have a uh, um, painted desert, and that's the one we've got now, which is 10, and I think it's like 40, something like that. Oh, uh, no, sorry. Mountain power is uh, uh, 0.5, and then the max height is, min height is 10, and the max height is, I think it's, it's 10 less than whatever we're using now, so I'll just make it 50. And the mountain power bonus, there isn't one. All right, so we've got these two biomes. Let's go ahead and uh, pop off to our, let's save this, and let's pop off to our chunk creation script. And we're going to go ahead and uh, calculate out some biomes and pass it to our build face, or not our build face function, our map function. Uh, here it is, create map from scratch, or calculate map from scratch. So as you may have noticed, we're not actually using grain 2 offset for anything. Um, so when we actually do get theoretical byte, we pass it in, but we never actually use it. There's no offset 2 here at any point. But there should be, um, because you can see we're using offset 1 twice. And I've got this uh, um, cluster value is currently being used to determine the brick type, and that's just a bad thing to try and do with it. So we're going to go ahead and delete these bricks. And instead, we're going to make our cluster value determine our biome. So cluster value times equals. And then we're going to do uh, world.currentworld.biomes.length. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and actually make that uh, int biome index equals mathf.floor to int cluster value times, there we go, and this should be an offset 2, not offset 1. Um, so we have the biome that we've hit, right? So let's just go ahead and grab it. We'll say uh, uh, biome biome equals world.currentworld.biomes biome index. Easy enough. But here's the thing. We've put this down here, and it actually needs to be up here. because this determines these values. So we need to get our, uh, our height base is equal to height, and our max height is equal to height, and our height swing is still equal to that. Uh, when we get this here, we do mountain value equals mathf.square root mountain value. We actually want to change that out for mathf.power mountain value comma biome dot mountain power. Above this we need to say that mountain value plus equals biome dot mountain power bonus uh, if 
mountain value is less than zero, mountain value is still equals zero. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how that ends up. Ah, crunch. All right, so we're no longer doing biomes by chunk. So unfortunately, there's no real easy way for us to make the chunks tell us what biome they are. But we can see here that we have two distinct categories of biome. Um, and you can see that this is probably the mountain biome. Uh, and this is probably over there, probably the plains biome. But our mountains biome isn't particularly convincing at the moment, and I think that's because I made it too short. I think I made the max value quite low. Um, but another reason that it's hard to tell apart is because we haven't actually set up any of the bricks uh, to be different from biome to biome. I'm actually going to leave that for next episode. Um, this episode is... Uh, we've got lots of floating crap. Well, whatever. Um, that's an interesting shape. You know, I bet the biome switches right there, like in midair, because the biomes don't have to switch along the ground. The biomes can switch in midair. Uh, and also, we're going to be doing blending between biomes, um, but not this episode. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and polish our biome code, and we're also going to go ahead and make it so that perhaps we can blend between biomes. Either way, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.